so this is the retaining wall, or will be, which is 60 thou sheet. But what I'm going to do before I uh, glue the back side with some thin sheet, because it's going to have a few different returns on it, to add some visual interest and helps create depth as well when you're looking down. It's not just a straight. Whenever you introduce an angle, it always looks a little bit deeper like the perspective. Um, but first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rough the surface down while they're flat. And the reason why I wanna do that with some 60 grit is because when I put texture on this, I'm gonna do a concrete finish. It'll give some tooth to stick to. Even though acrylic uh, paste or gel sticks readily to plastic, even if it's smooth, it's always a good idea to rough up, especially evergreen plastic in this case, before you glue it or add texture to it. So that's what I'm going to do. Just going to rough sand these down. And then I'm going to glue and just sort of shape the wall. But I'm not going to glue it with heavy rigid plastic. I'm going to use like 20 thou. It's like some strips so I can still move it and bend it. Because when I lay it in place, I want to have the ability to tweak it a little bit first just to get the position that I want. And then it'll actually get glued to a piece of foam where the mountain sort of it holds back the mountain and the erosion, okay? Okay, I guess I should show just this. It seems rather simple, but you know, that's just because I've done it so many times and there are probably people out there that would like a better explanation and that's fair. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a bit of a strong back strip on the back of these returns. Otherwise, you know, how are you going to hold it together, right? It's just not going to hold up well. And you want to build this as a separate model, this retaining wall, if you can, because it allows you to model it separate from the layout, etc. Tweak things. You know, you might want to add things. Like I want to add some details to this, like, you know, four by eight sheets of plywood marking sort of from form boards or whatever. But the idea is this, this wall was built quite a few years before the actual scene as of today like in 2010 and there would have been modifications to it over time due to erosion and water run out like I'm going to add a, a plate here with a pipe with you know water you know just to because what you know like, like there might have been problems with flooding and just um, uncontrollable erosion so I'm going to add a detail on this later but you know you want to build it up so it has some rigidness to it and so you can handle it and modify it etc so i just take some 20 thou strip but i don't score it though when i bend this because i don't want to weaken it i just take it over a sanding block like this and then just fold it evergreen is great that way like watch this look i can just fold this plastic and it won't break this is 20 thou right just get a rough line you know you don't have to be fancy about it. you're not going to see this part anyway and, you know, remember, right, to sand it a bit, because the glue will really grab whatever side you're going to glue to. In this case, it'll be this, you know, concave shape. And then I'll just lay it in like this, see? I'll glue that. And then, just like this one, see how I can still bend it if I need to? If I need to tweak it to the position on the layout? Because you're going to be doing dry runs like that until you get it the way you want it. All right? Okay, so this retaining wall is coming right along. So you can see what I did was I took a piece of number 166, 80 thou by 125 thou. It says quarter scale 4 by 6 on there, but that doesn't really matter. But that's a good reference, though, if you're building an O scale, right? See. So I just 
cap the top of this wall with a you know sort of a cosmetic touch on the wall uh, maybe you know probably for extra reinforcement as well they're just cut in separate pieces the bottom here I'm just going to use some 2x12 okay number 8212 HO scale 2x12 and I'm just going to run a strip a full length of it and just glue each section bend it and then glue it bend it glue it that'll that'll help strengthen it a bit as well and it'll it'll suggest a bit of a foundation on the bottom of the wall because they would never erect a wall like this without building a foundation with rebar in this case where there's asphalt which would have been probably done later they would have laid asphalt that kind of thing there's always a history to every model that you build and if you build what you see then then there's no question right you know what i mean i build everything i see out there take pictures of it and i build a model of it it's not the same i change it up to fit the layout but that's the idea there's always a history to a model no matter what it is even if it's a a, a tree a retaining wall a building trains whatever tanks planes they all have a history Okay, so here's the retaining wall, pretty much finished in terms of its structure and ready for texturing, right? Which I can use either coarse molding paste or fine pumice gel or whatever, just to create an initial texture first, so I can lay pieces of tape on here, That's which is one method, to suggest sheets of plywood for form boards, because this would have been built using form boards. Whenever it was built, I don't know. Like there's a lot of concrete walls like this in New West that were built during the, like after the depression. So, you know, and that's the way they built them. So, and they used rough cut stone, everything, but they were using concrete during that time quite a bit. So, so yeah, that took an hour roughly, like just an hour. That's all, you know, it's, it's just a sheet and some scrap strip, right? Okay. So, you know. Okay, so the, the wall's pretty much built up, and I want to add a drain pipe, okay, which is just 5, 5 32nd, okay, number 225, 5 32nd two, number 225, and I just need a small little piece, okay, but before I, I uh, mount that on there, a couple things I want to do first. I want to just take a knife and just clean out the edge to make it look really thin because it looks too thick, this material. So it looks a lot better when you sort of hone it out carefully with a knife or a drill bit so that when you paint it, it looks like a thin scale pipe, okay? This is just 15 thou thick scrap with a 532nd hole drilled in. And then I'm going to show you poor man's rivets in a second just for this plate to add a little extra interest. So it'll be like that, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is, before I glue that on there, I'm just gonna take a compass, like the pointer, okay? And I'm gonna just draw, rough in a couple of lines. I just scratched this up quick. I'm not gonna put much time into it. It's just a rusty old galvanized plate or whatever. Put a poke in each corner then put one in the middle you don't need to measure this just eyeball it unless you're building it for an IPMS show because <laughs> they're going to pull out the pocket flashlight right and uh, they're going to cancel you if it's not perfect and then I'm going to put one there and there yeah, that's good enough. Then you turn it over and see how they're embossed. And when you paint that, you know, you, it'll give a hint of some kind of fasteners there. You can use nut and bolts if you want, but I'm not going to bother. I think this will work fine. See? I'll just cut that off that plate and mount it like that.
Okay, uh, so I want to add a revision to this wall before I uh, pursue the painting any further. Uh, what I do is I sanded this bottom sort of flange piece. Like This is to, to put grass growing in the corners of it here because it's easier to... I never explained this earlier, but it's easier to mount this. Like if you want this to come on and off the layout, let's say, um, then you got to plant grass along a perfect line for this to tuck in behind. But if you add a little strip here, this is 15 thou, and you bend it down a bit so that it sits tight like that, then you can plant grass all in here as one piece, as one model, like a standalone wall. And then you won't have to worry so much about a seam on the pavement along here. I mean, if there is, it won't matter, like it won't look as ugly without any grass if you don't have this. Because how are you going to glue the grass to this wall if you don't have a tray or a shelf to glue it to? That's my what I'm trying to explain, right? It sits on the layout like that, and if all the grass is already growing up and stuff, then it's all one model, right? The only thing I have to worry about is the seam, but then I can bend this down. I've done this before, and it's tight. Now, what I decided was I think I want to turn this into a drainage ditch because there are a lot of walls I've looked at other photos that they some have drainage ditch sort of built in asphalt or concrete sometimes so I'm just gonna I cleaned off the paint here and I'm gonna glue this half round piece 242 half round 80 thou and I'm gonna glue it to this bottom flange piece and just turn it into a drainage ditch that way all the washes that fall and accumulate and I can add water and weeds and stuff in here It'll just add a little more character to the wall. And then this drain pipe will sort of be draining into it. And it'll just run out here into the ditch by the tracks.
Okay, so the retaining wall is pretty much pr primarily done. Uh, there'll be a few tweaks later, like I'm going to add grass along here and maybe a bit of debris. And of course, there'll be foliage and stuff when I do this, the uh, back cut or the rock cut slide area. Um, so if you look at the shape of this, like I know that the angles mostly be viewed from this. So you notice how I ran this, this particular return longer than, than the others. Like there's a reason for that, right? Because I don't view the wall this way. Like this way has a perspective sort of look to it as well. See, it looks like it goes further because it's shrinking down in size. Okay, because it's longer and angles down. Now if you turn it this way. Uh, you also get the perspective because this span is longer and then these are shorter. So it just just makes these look kind of in the same way as something like that would. Like little things like that matter, right? Like when you study perspective, like artistically, like those are fundamental rules that artists will use on a, build, on a flat painting, for example. Okay, so this works both ways in that sense, but that's why... I built this not just a square, boring, rectangular retaining wall. That's why I added in these returns and these deviations. Because I was thinking that through as I was eyeballing it in place, okay? Okay, so I want to address a few details along the uh, base of this wall. Um, let me just first say that I'm really pleased with the way this wall turned out. I never expected it. Like, who would think a retaining wall, right, can be a feature on a layout? But they can. Like, everything is. And this proves that when you just do a flat, like a building flat or just part of a building, like, you don't need to build the whole building, right? Like, my, I would have to say that my favorite flat on River Road so far is the brewery. That brewery, like it's a, was really not that complicated of a build. Like in terms of laying it up, I built it on a wood subframe, not just raw like this because there's more to it, but on 60 thou, the same thickness. And just a lot of details from photographs and just weathering like this kind of thing and paint. And I just love that. Like I never get tired of looking at that brewery. Like when I look down the tracks there, it's just, I don't know, I guess I had the, you know, the... Uh, you know, the good fortune of the zone uh, when I designed that area. But um, I like this retaining wall too, kind of in the same way it reminds me of it. It's, 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 it's like this is scrap, really, right? It's like not even one sheet of evergreen 60 thou with some scrap. And some acrylic paints, right? Like, so, you know, like don't uh, underestimate, you know, the simplicity of a, of a feature subject that just doesn't have much to it. So what I want to do is I want to add something more to this. I want to add some grass growing around, probably more around here where the water is. There'll be a lot of water. So I'm going to add some here and then some tufts here and there. That's why I sort of, this was a late sort of revision. And the reason why I did it was, is well, I guess, I mean, both ways would work if you just had just a plain base on the wall, but it helps to have a little bit of a footing, I think. It adds more visual interest, which I did add here. But then I added this here. And then I added this half round as a, as a trough, as a sort of a runoff trough. Okay. I mean, there may have been a creek running up through here at one point. Like, you know what's really funny, too? I'll just mention this quick. Like, there's a trough like this in, in Vancouver City. Like, there was a lot of trout streams and creeks, but they've all been sort of cemented in and built over, right? And you can actually, like on a given spring, every other year or so, you can f find salmon spawning up troughs like this. Literally, like salmon, like 10-pound salmon, 6, six to 10-pound salmon spawning up a trough, you know, to their death at the end. It's really bizarre. But anyway, so th this would be for a lot of water coming down. And I'm going to add some grub. I'm going to pinch and stab like I've shown up before. I'm going to use 12 mil. Uh, light green. I like to use light green because by default I think it's a good color. You can touch it up with your airbrush later if you want. Just put paper behind it and paint it or even with a brush. Uh, but I'm just going to use the, and the 12 mil I can pinch, right? Easier. 
And then I can stab it in. I'll put a bead of matmium, just stab it in, and then just move it around, you know, tweak it a bit. And then I can come in later and just snip away with some little scissors, right? These are great, by the way, I'll just say in closing on this. Uh, if you want to find little scissors tools like this, go to fly tying shops, like sport fishing places. And look, go in the fly tying section, where most people don't go anymore. And uh, you'll find little nice... Nice little tools there that are good for modeling as well, okay?